Hey, thank you for joining us for this week's midweek Bible study. We are towards the end of Acts chapter 13. This is where we wrapped up last week. I'm going to dive right in. I'm going to give you a little bit of a disclaimer before we dive into the word. This is probably a little bit more already Christian oriented tonight. Okay, I'm going to share some more scriptural, not so many stories, dig into the word and speak some Bible lingo, even a little bit more than usual with this verse by verse expository story. Let's start in verse 34 where we finished up last week. The Bible says, as for the fact God raised Jesus, that's he raised him. God the Father, the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. No more to return to corruption. That's important, I highlighted that, okay? No more, once you're redeemed, come on, once you receive salvation, we, we, once you give your life to Jesus, you don't take it back again, okay? No more to return to corruption. He has spoken this way, I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Now, that is a promise to Jesus. Okay, that's important for us to understand. That is a promise to Jesus. I will give you the holy and pure blessings of David. Let me read verse 35, then I'll come back to this next slide. Verse 35, therefore, he says also in another psalm. Now, again, this one is to David. You will not let your Holy One see corruption. So God said in verse 34, I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Then in verse 35, we see David says, he proclaims the promise, you will not let your Holy One see corruption. After Paul had just said, let us no longer return to corruption. So you can see this reciprocation of promises. Here's what we wrote down. When God says, I will, this is what God says. When God the Father in his word says, I will, we or the child of God says, you will. So we rehearse the promises of God. You may have heard me say this before. Uh, so often we, we tend to pray out of our problems. Lord, help me with this. This is wrong. I need you to this. Okay. Or we pray out of our pain. God, why did you let? Why did this? If this would have happened, this would. I, I don't. Do you not see how? And, and that's okay. I believe God's okay with that. Okay? But if that's the only way that we pray, we're really missing out on what God has for us. 2,000 promises. Instead of praying out of only praying out of our problems and our pain, let's pray out of our promises. Let's pray out of his promises. When God says, I will, when you see that in Scripture, as you're reading through God's Word, Old Testament, New, Psalms, Proverbs, whatever, wherever the promise is, highlight that. When God says, I will, the child of God reserves the right to say, hey, you will. You will. Because we are joint heirs to the promise. That's who we are. We are joint heirs, the Bible says, with Jesus in the lineage of David. And we're also joint heirs, Galatians says, to the promise of Abraham. What was the promise of Abraham? You're going to write this down on your own. The promise of Abraham was blessing. It was a generational blessing. Land, okay, or inheritance that he could hand down. That's spiritual, physical, all of the above, okay. And descendants. And we are joint heirs with Jesus. So when God told Jesus, I will, Whatever God said to Jesus, he says to, as his child, as his son, he says to the sons and daughters who came in under Jesus, the first son of many, okay? That's a lot of Bible stuff. Let's go to verse 36. Verse 36, for David, after he had served the purpose of God, I underline that, the purpose of God. Why am I here for God's purpose? For God's plan. That's why I was put on this earth. 
For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers, and he, he actually saw corruption because he wasn't Jesus, because the Christ had not come. He was prophesied, but the prophecy had not come to pass. Watch this, verse 37. But he whom God raised up, or raised from the dead, did not see corruption. Now, I'm substituting corruption and condemnation, and a good reference here is Romans 8, 1. Familiar passage, there is therefore now in Christ no corruption, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jump with me to verse 38. Let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man, I'm going to come back to that, through this man, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And by him, everyone who believes is freed from everything they could not be freed or you could not be freed by the law of Moses. Write down this phrase, through this man. I've given you in just the last five minutes about seven things in this passage that come through this man, that come through Jesus that come through me building my relationship with Jesus. This passage that I have read through several times before, but never dug into the way that we are right now. That's why I love this so much. That, and we always know what we're going to look at. We always know what we're going to do. We're on a journey through the book of Acts. Through this man. Through this man what? Through this man, the promise of God. Through this man, joint heirs. Through this man, joint heirs in the promise of Abraham. Blessing, land, descendants, it means provision. I don't have to worry about what God has already promised he would do. Through this man, no corruption. Through this man, forgiveness of sins being proclaimed to me. Through this man, a resurrected life. Through this man, freedom for all who believe. By the way, that word believe in verse 39, that's pistuo. Again, it means to entrust or believe in. It's a place where we have hope, so we hope in Christ and not in this world and not in material possessions, and, 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 and our attitude is not based on our atmosphere, come on, but, but on the one who has anointed us. Our attitude is based on our advocate. You may want to write that down. That may be something that you just want to say over and over again as you begin to have a bad day. Whoa, 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 hang on. My attitude is not based on my atmosphere. My attitude is based on my advocate, and his name is Jesus advocate. He advocates on my behalf. He also anoints me to accomplish his will every day. And so I fix my eyes on him and I follow him. Why? Because in him is freedom from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. Watch this, verse 40, beware. Now he is preaching. He is having a good time sharing the gospel, the life that Jesus came to give, the promises of God. And then he says, verse 40, but beware. This is actually a really good passage. It's, it's a quick contrast is what it is. It's a quick contrast between a life in Christ and a life apart from Christ. I just wrote down the word beware right here. Verse 40. Beware. Let's look at the verse. Therefore, lest what is said in the prophets should come about in your life. This is a warning. As much as we want to share the word of God, part of the word of God is the warning. Because God always gives a warning before he pours out his wrath. Verse 41, here's the warning. This is what we should be aware of. Look, you scoffers. What is a scoffer? A scoffer, it, 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 it's self-explanatory. Just do it with your mouth. Scoff. That's what a scoffer is. That's a scoffer, okay? People who just explain away or ignore Look, you scoffers, be astounded and perish, for I am doing a work in your days. God is still at work. We don't get to look around and say, well, God's done. No, no, no. He's still at work, and he's actually called us to do the work. For I'm doing a work in your days, a work that you will not believe, even if one tells it to you. That was the warning. I'm reading two more verses. I'm going to wrap this up. Verse 42. As they went out, the people begged, because Paul showed them the difference. The contrast, which I'll show you before we go. 
As they went out, the people begged that these things might be told them the next Sabbath. Now, look, I have never left here and somebody, please come back next week, like, preach the same sermon again. That's what's happening in this context. These people are like, Paul, this is so good. You got to come back and preach this again. Actually, that did happen a little bit on Wednesday night over the years. You got to preach this on Sunday. I'm like, yeah, you already heard it. Tell somebody for me. So verse 43, after the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews, I love this, many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas. Why did they follow Paul and Barnabas? Because Paul and Barnabas were following Jesus, who as they spoke with them, urged them, as I'm urging you today, continue in the grace of God. The grace of God, write this down and I'll pray out. The grace of God opposes the sin of man. If you have two ends of the spectrum, you have the grace of God over here and you have the sin of man over here. And grace comes in and covers the sin so that we don't continue in the sin. Remember he said, let us not return to corruption. Let us believe, pistuo, and be freed. Why? Because belief opposes unbelief. And by the way, behavior follows whichever one we're doing. And you see the difference in the two by the way an individual behaves. If you want to know what somebody believes, just look at how they behave. I say this a lot. It's almost becoming cliche. But belief opposes behavior. And finally, conversion, if you will. Belief leads to conversion, which opposes condemnation. Or in this context, it opposes corruption. So I have the grace of God, which opposes the sin of man, and belief in Christ, which, by the way, leads to or is equal to conversion. The opposite is unbelief, corruption. You see corruption? Look in our society. It goes hand in hand with unbelief. You see condemnation? Look in our society, and unfortunately in some churches, because they don't believe the right thing about what God is saying. They don't understand that they're not just called to be saved, they're called to serve and to lead others in the same salvation that they have received. What is God saying to you in just these nine verses, 34 through 43? I'm going to pray over you, and I want to invite you to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Maybe go back and read some of these passages. This was 12 minutes total. Go back and listen again or, or just rewind and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word. These nine verses that we may have just read over normally actually show us a contrast in the way that we could be living and the way that you want us to live. And I pray that we would use this passage to sit down and show people this is what God has called us to and this is what happens when we're in Christ but beware, this is the corruption that follows a life of disobedience apart from Christ. But this isn't God's will for you. God's will is for you to continue in the grace of God. So Lord, help us. Help us to do just that. To not continue in our sin. To not be satisfied with something that's less than your absolute best. But to continue in your grace and never return to corruption in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you and thank you for watching.